Good evening. Welcome to uh, Jack's Corner. Tonight we're going to do a little fun with some uh, bar mill Instafence. That's uh, you've seen them uh, probably out and around. This is the quickest way to build uh, board fences out there. Makes it really easy. Um, they paint up really nice. Um, they go together real quick. Instead of cutting those boards one at a time, you, they come on a strip. So uh, let's get let's get into it. Okay, now what we have here is we have uh, the three three of the scales. We have actually four, but I brought the three, which is N scale, H O scale, and O scale. And that's all the ones we're going to kind of concentrate on. But whatever you do with any of these techniques, we can do in all four scales, including S. So we do have S scale also. All right, this is what we're going to start with. This is the fun part. Um, this is the board fence that we have. And as you can see... They're all attached here on the bottom, so they all hold in place. So while uh, you can do some painting and you can do some arranging before you have to cut all these little pieces. And then on the back side, you'll see this two scribe lines, and that is for your top and bottom rail on your fences. So our next step will be, we'll take this and we'll figure out what we're going to do with it by painting now, now it. we're gonna talk about staying. what we're gonna to use to uh, color our fences and paint them up and weather them a little bit. We'll start with our basic colors. Um, tonight I'm gonna to use white and I'm gonna use red. These are both acrylic paints, uh, 50 cents a bottle, dollar a bottle, very inexpensive, great to use, uh, easy to clean up. Uh, in our washes, I'm gonna use Hunter Line. This one happens to be driftwood. The other one I like is light gray. And then my good old ink and alcohol. Remember this is um, two ounces of alcohol, 10 drops from the little eye dropper of ink and then shake it up and you'll be all set. I have two sets of pan pastels. One is a brown, which happens to be burnt sienna. And the other one is yellow oxide, which is actually a green. Um, this is my windshield washer fluid I use to wash my brushes. Assortment of good different brushes, depending what I wanna use. And then I have two of these small testers paint. I'll talk about those later. All right, one of the first steps I like to do is I like to stain, if I'm going to stain my um, rails on the back, um, I like to stain them ahead of time because once I put the glue on, the stain won't take where the glue is. So I like to stain them ahead of time. So they'll start out like this, and then we're going to stain them up and set them aside and let them dry. That way they're gonna be dry when it's time to, to glue them to, to the actual um, fence, fence pieces. So that's what we're gonna do. Make sure these are stained up and completely dry when we go to glue them on. All right, now, now we're gonna try and figure out what we wanna do with the fence. Do we want a painted or stained fence? Do we want just a rustic wooden fence? Do we want a brand new fence or an old fence? Uh, that's what we have to decide. So in this one, I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do with a wood weathered fence. That would be like a silver gray or a, you know, a light brown. Um, these, are, these are made out of plywood. They do take stain pretty well. Um, but the problem is trying to get them light enough to make them look like light wood. So what I've done here, as you can see, I've taken a section of them and I've painted them white. I like to do that with a white because um, then I can uh, go from there and I can light, I can darken it up a little bit. So I'm gonna go, in this case, I'm gonna go from light to dark. So that's what I'm gonna do next. A lot of our... All right, now, what we're gonna do once we've got it painted and stained the way we want and our back piece is stained, these aren't stained, but they normally would. What I would do is I would run a bead of glue across the whole stick. And then if you notice there's two little lines in here, you're gonna stick your rails down, one there, both glued all the way down the lines and one on the top, just like that. And you're gonna set it aside and let it dry. Um, the next step, what we'd do is we would cut, the but once we have the rails on we're going to cut the bottom off and that's we're going to just trim it right at the very top here all the way down the line cutting every one of these until it comes off try to cut real close to the wooden to make it flush so you don't have to sand them off so once you get them all off that piece will come off and look like that that's what's going to look like when it's done you want to save that we'll talk about that later next we're going to flip it over and we're going to start doing a little bit, depends upon what you want here. If you want a brand new fence, you're going to leave it alone. But if you want to add some character to it, you want to break that top line up a little bit by just nipping off the tops of a couple individual of the, that's a little hard here, boy. Like that. You're going to do the bottoms, you're going to do the tops. Um, and 
you can add some character. You can pull a piece of the fence out if you want. You can leave a, a halfway up if you want. Um, but that's what we're looking to do now. We're trying to get a character to the fence. Now, basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna weather the bottom of the fence a little bit more with a little bit of brown pan pastels right along the bottom edge and kind of work it up a little bit, just like this. Nothing big stack, just a little bit. Um, if it gets too bad, you can take a, a cloth and, and rub some of it off um, and then a little bit of green here and there. Just represent moth, get it up on the, on the boards a little bit. And that's gonna show it at the bottom where it was against the, the, uh, the ground. And if you look here, what we've done here, you can see it, there's a little bit of it here. And you can see how we've distressed the fence. And this is the white fence again. And this is the plain fence, which we left uncut. So that's basically what you're gonna do. All right, our last uh, actually construction piece of the fence is to add the vertical posts that hold it up. I do about every eight feet apart and cut them on my chopper all the same length and then glue them every eight feet. And that is the last part of the fence construction. All right, here's the last last bit you can add to the fence if you'd like. Um, we supply you with some uh, signs to go on the uh, fences. This one happens to be an end scale. So what you wanna do is you wanna cut them out with a brand new knife and a straight edge, and then apply them to your fence where you think they look well. I would lay them out before you glue them on till you look, you like the look of them. And then once they're done, add some glue and stick them down and add a little bit of um, ink and alcohol to weather them up a little bit, and then you're done. That's the end of the fence. All right, uh, if you wanna do your fences in a color um, and make it weathered, this is a kind of a thing I, I, uh, I've learned to do here. This is barn red acrylic paint, and I'm gonna swatch it on just like this. No, no, no don't go crazy here. Um, I'm gonna leave some blank spots, some, some heavy spots like this, just like this. And the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my ink and alcohol and I'm gonna kind of blend it in. And what's gonna happen with the alcohol is it's gonna kind of spread out that red paint a little bit, but it's also gonna stain any wood that's, that's bare. So you're gonna get that silvery color of wood behind the paint. And you can do it, get it done. You can go back a little bit. If you see a little bit spot, you wanna add a little bit more red, you can do it right over the ink and it works pretty well. So what you're going to end up with when you're done, and here it is in the in the uh, O scale, you can see it's not an even red. It looks like a stained, weathered red paint. Yeah. All right, so this is what we've got come up with the fence, where our fences are done. You can see this fence is done just plain wood. This one's colored, and this is the white light wood with all the pictures, and that's what you get when you're done. So stop by and grab an Insta fence. Uh, they're fun to do. They're an evening project. Make them real quick. Kits come with the uh, telephone poles and the cross bucks that go on the phone. So it'll look like this on the pole, look like this. And then it ends up looking like this. as a small little V piece and on top. Uh, it also comes with a straight piece, which we're, we're gonna substitute. And most of the kits come with a piece of insta fence that looks like this. When you cut the bottom off the fence, you're gonna end up with something that looks like this. Save it, because we're gonna trim it down and we're gonna do three little tabs on one side, none in the middle, three little tabs on the other side. And that's what we're gonna make, a little piece that goes on there. And then we're going to take that and we're gonna glue it to the top of that, just like that. All done, that's the whole, all the assembly we'll need to do. The next thing we're gonna do is take the V part, which would have been metal pieces, and we're gonna paint them. I use the testers Silver works really good. It's an enamel, but it works really well. Um, and I'm gonna paint the V. And the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take testers. This is a me metallic green. Um, look for the metallic green, but probably any of the greens will do, which is a glossy green. You want a glossy color. And I'm gonna paint lightly the ends of those little tabs. We're gonna do those little tabs. It's kind of hard to see, but it's gonna make them green and shiny and you're gonna get two applications that's gonna make them a little round butt on the top of them. And when you're done, you're all through, little alcohol on it to, to, to uh, stain it up. And then I'm going to apply it to the pole with a bit of glue here and a bit of glue there, get them on straight. You do one or two. And if you wanna add, if you can add one of our 
uh, transformers to the top of the pole. When you're done, you got a neat looking little pole. And you've used parts that came with the kit. So here's a real easy one to do. Give it a try, it's fun to do.